Something very remarkable has happened over the last 50 years. Um, this is the period of space flight. People have been putting things into space. And over the course of the last 50 years, we've put hundreds, thousands of satellites into orbit around the Earth. Most of those satellites are in relatively low orbits, between about 300 to 1,000 kilometers. But certain kinds of communication satellites are in a very different orbit. They're at an altitude of about 36,000 kilometers. And at that height, they don't experience any atmospheric drag at all. When you look at the celestial mechanics of how those orbits work, it turns out that they're stable. They, they'll never come back to Earth. They're never going anywhere. And when you take a step back and think about that, you realize that something very remarkable has happened, which is that over the last 50 years, the humans have built a ring around our planet, not unlike the rings of Saturn. But instead of being made out of dust and debris, the ring around Earth we've created is made out of machines. And what's more, this ring is now a permanent part of our planet. The communication satellites we've put into orbit around Earth will remain there for billions of years until the sun becomes a red giant four or five billion years from now. These are the real monuments of the contemporary moment. The Last Pictures is a project to mark one of them, a collection of images that might explain something about why these spacecraft are there and maybe explain something about what happened to the people that made them and why the people that made them are not there anymore. This is a somber project in many ways, looking down at Earth when we're gone. A haunting kind of shadowy project. But it's so smart that way. And it's so critically powerful. And it isn't about art. You know, it's not some arty about art project. It's really about us as people trying to put ourselves in check about the fragility of us on the planet. And that kind of commentary I think is so powerful for art to give to the world, right? That it is to say, you know, outer space, as much as you might think it's about science and facts, it's a world of myth and dreams and delusion. And in a sense, this project is an opportunity to have a little corrective criticality up there. I think the Artifact Project really confronts the question of what it means that in the last hundred years, Humans have become the dominant geomorphic agents on Earth, that is the dominant force that's caused significant ecological and geological changes to the planet. I think it's in this sense that the artifact project is a kind of cosmic message in a bottle. We're used to thinking about time in terms of hours or years, but I think the project really asks us to think about uh, a deeper time beyond the human. By encoding information about our presence on Earth, in materials whose lifespan, in a sense, will be possibly greater than ours, while ironically um, on things that were made by us. From the beginning of the project, many of us were really wary of any gesture that would, would be or appear to be um, like any attempt to represent humanity, as if that's unstable and monolithic entity and so when we were thinking about okay without context you really can't get any meaning out of these images so why choose you know what is you could send a kitten or a bomb it's there without context there is no difference there and we started thinking about that and and i think that was an interesting moment um, and one of the things we thought about was sort of that the idea of curation is, is important and, and selection was, it, the process of selection was important whether or not that, whether or not there's any message or meaning to ultimately be gleaned from, from the collection. First question, how do you make images that can last for billions of years? Is there any kind of media that, that is that archival? Fortunately, Zhao Ribas at MIT invited me up there to be an artist in residence and introduced me to, to some material scientists and we thought through this question of how can we make images 
that will last for as long as the sun, if not longer. So anything that we wanted to make the artifact out of, anything that we wanted to put around the artifact, such as padding right, that would allow it to survive launch, um, needed to be materials that um, uh, satellite companies um, had flown before. Right? And so silicon is, has been up in space many times. Great choice. It was uh, allowed us um, to encode a high density of information. So there are standard tools and processes that have uh, very commonly allow us to put high densities of features or physical information. And secondly then, it, it is a ceramic. Um, which uh, is going to be more resistant to any of these diffusive processes which tend to destroy, uh, if you will, the encoded information. The design philosophy behind this really uh, primarily was about practicality and uh, this project came along nine months before launch. So we had uh, maybe two or three weeks to meet all of these requirements that, uh, that normally you have years to meet. And uh, yeah, in the end, we, uh, yeah, we passed all of these tests. We, we did make it through. I mean, we, we were holding our breath uh, when we sent these things off to, um, to have them uh, tested. And uh, we were all greatly relieved when, uh, when we heard that it passed. We didn't have a satellite, and the idea was to attach an object to a satellite, so I went about trying to find satellite companies that would be interested in working with us. You have to have a satellite that's going to go up within the next six months to a year. You have to, so it had to be on our timeline, and they had to be um, interested, and uh, we had to figure out how to convince them to do it for free, because um, otherwise it was going to be cost prohibitive. And then I just started cold calling them and asking them if they wanted to uh, work on an art project and let us attach an object to their satellite, and they inevitably said no. Eventually, Ann Pasternak met Chase and Chris Ergen, who put us in touch with the Echo Star Company, and they got interested in it and agreed to uh, let us use their spacecraft as a host vehicle for our uh, project. I immediately liked the idea because I've seen, you know, 15 satellites go up from Echo Star, and every one of them has been pretty much strictly business, business related. Um, and so the idea of putting some kind of art project at the time, I didn't really have any concept whatsoever uh, what the project was about. Um, but I liked, I liked the idea. And then uh, once I realized I liked <laughs> where Trevor was at. Um, made a couple of calls. It seemed like it would be feasible time-wise um, for Echo 16 and we went from there. This, is, this has been a very difficult project to work on for a lot of reasons. There's years and years of work that went into this before we had any clue or any idea that this might actually be possible. So in a lot of ways uh, there was years of literally dedicating oneself to a dream um, with the hope that that dream might actually happen. I, I was working on this in Berlin. This was fabricated in Ohio uh, and, and then hand delivered to California. Finally, ultimately, it will be launched from Kazakhstan. So this, this thing has been bounced all around the world at this point. This project, it, it required a, a extraordinary effort from a lot of people. Uh, I think everybody involved really uh, had a personal investment in seeing this happen. Uh, without that, uh, I, I don't see how it could have happened. We do public art. This is a public art project in outer space. Kind of hard to get there. It's pretty small, not even going to really be able to see it. So in many ways, it's very esoteric in that sense. So we always were saying, what is the terrestrial version of this project? How do people actually engage with it? Well, it's through conversations, through dialogue, it's through a kind of rich discussion about the implications of the work. Like many of the things that, that I and others around MIT uh, participate in, our, our hope for this project is uh, to create a greater awareness of science and technology and, and how they might be used um, to solve um, problems and, and how to uh, engage in um, uh, opportunities uh, for uh, uh, for the nation and for, for the world. The, the significance of the human impact on Earth and the particular time that I think that we are existing in, which is, you know, this interesting threshold in which we can both see, we have the tools and the technologies to see and understand things about the world that we live in, but we're at the, also at the threshold in which 
the technologies that we have to do something about it are coming up fast against this kind of inevitable conclusion of how we got here. People, you know, get going through and learning, you know, kind of like I was able to, um, more about themselves in a way through, and, and the human race, through, through taking a journey through these hundred pictures and, and potentially thinking about, you know, what that means for them and, and what that means for, for us. Where do we go from here? Oh, do I think aliens will find it? I hope they do. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I hope more that aliens find it or that at some point when we have to clean up the um, geostationary orbit because there are too many satellites floating around there and in the graveyard orbit um, that somebody finds it. I think it'd be cooler if humans found it in the future. The Last Pictures is a document of this historical moment, but it's not meant to be a representation of humanity. It's not supposed to speak for everybody. It's a very particular kind of document, one person's impressions about what the world might look like at this particular moment. And in a way, that's all we can ask out of art. What I want out of art is things that help us see who we are now. And the best I can hope for is that this project will give us, some, uh, give us a way that we can actually look at ourselves.